I'm guessing here. No idea. tell you about spoilers but everybody's been asking questions about <laughs> and I can't seem to get across what the throw compensators are so throw compensators do this if I if this goes on the ground I don't know if you can see it on the ground but I'll put it on the ground and flip it backwards okay see what happens to the alivons the alivons flip up onto the upper surface okay what this does is it protects the wires from bending okay and it, you just flip them back like that to get it back in flying mode. And also, inside your electronics box, it takes the stress off your servos. So those, that's the, the total thing that it does. Now, also, what you've got to understand is that the directions have this geometry, and I'm, what I mean by geometry is the setup, okay, for the height of the servo arms inside here, okay, the height of the servo arms on your alivons, all right, and the way the wires come out here also, it's set up in a certain geometry so that it enables it to do this. If the geometry is not correct, it won't enable it to do it very easily. Uh, it'll put more stress, or it won't enable it to do it at all. On a conventional uh, glider, uh, where your your pro guys. Uh, that are been into um, RC for a long time, and I haven't. Uh, they've been taught that you can't have any of this right here. Okay, there's a flutter in here. I'm not sure what they call it. In other words, they want the control arm. The controls as stiff as possible, so there's no flutter here at all in the controls. But in this application for this glider, all right, it's not that necessary. Okay, they can think that it is, but it's, it's not. It might give you slight bit of better control if this is completely stiff, but what you're sacrificing is longevity. So for you people that are building gliders, you know, and, and wanting to fly them for the first time or wanting to make sure that your alivons last as long as they can without getting broken, seeing they're, in, they're a, you know, a fairly thin, um, <clears throat> uh, light, you know, balsa material that can get easily broken, this helps it to not get busted, okay? And you want to maintain your wires so they last a long time without getting broken. And the other thing is these servos, you know, maintaining the servos without stripping them. And that's what the turtle compensators, or maybe I should have called them stress relievers, okay? Stress relief on the wires, stress relief on the alivons. This is the alivon, all right? And stress relief on the servos. And that's the purpose of it. So let's do some flying. After I put my sunglasses on so I can see. <laughs> I hate sunglasses. I hate them. But necessary seeing I'm flying into the sun. So it's uh, blowing in, I don't know, two, three miles an hour maybe. Alright, still gets a couple of nice couple passes here and um, we'll see if there's any thermals coming in over the water. I'm looking out on the water. I do not recognize any thermals at the moment coming in. And the way you can tell, if the camera can see the water out there, the way you can tell the thermals coming across the water is there's a deviation in the, in the, in the color, okay, of the water. As the thermal comes across, since it changes, its, 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 its rotation is different uh, than the surrounding air, it changes the actual look of the water. In most cases, it makes the water uh, in the area where the thermal is, it makes it look darker, all right? That not necessarily might not be true, but I mean, you can see it. If you look at the, the consistency, the contrast to the water out there, that the thermal 
is coming across the water, you'll see a difference in the water. There's a difference. You, you'll see the difference if you look for it. All right. Now, in some cases, there's some over here, but they're not in the view of the camera, and I don't even know what the camera is showing you. Uh, I'm not that good with a camera yet. Um, where you'll see light areas in the water uh, meandering through the water. Those are not thermals. Those are streams. Okay, different temperatures in the water. All right, at meander through the water. Now those streams also exist in the air. All right, and you can fly those streams. You can find them. They're warmer currents. They'll be drifting through. Okay, and, and you'll see vultures if you watch vultures very closely. They're excellent stream flyers. They'll, they'll, you'll see them move this way all of a sudden and move that way all of a sudden and then all of a sudden take off real quickly because the stream enables the airspeed in the stream is a little different than the airspeed outside the stream um, and, and a lot of times streams are being sucked into a thermal so the actual airspeed here must be, might be like this where the stream itself the airspeed of the stream if you were to put a balloon in it would be going the opposite direction being sucked towards that thermal. I don't see any streams, and I, at the moment, don't see any thermals. Well, we just do a little, a little exploring here, a little flying. We're looking at the glider. I'm, I'm watching the glider. Uh, you know, if it's making any differences, what, what difference is it doing in the air? We get a little input. And just, I'm just watching it. All right? I don't see any consistency in the air. I'm looking for in, little inconsistencies in the air. And, I, and I'm also, I'm looking for, uh, little pops, or, or if the glider all of a sudden drops off, sometimes that'll indicate that I'm at the edge of a thermal. It doesn't look like a very, I'm looking across the lake here, and I don't see many indications of any thermal. We still could pop some, something off here off the grass area, or the parking lot area over here. be a fun little pull one off this tree here. If there is a thermal coming in, it'll, it'll hit that tree and then the tree will make the thermal thermal adhesion to the ground release and it'll release going right up that tree. It's like if you're flying a desert or a flat area, you, know, you want to get you want to find the thermal, the best place to go is to look for a high spot, a tower, okay? Um, I wrote an article on tower soaring one time. I never published it. Um, but it, you can be in Florida on even a, a, a somewhat overcast day, and they have some high towers down there, three, 400-foot towers. And you can just fly to that tower, get over the top of it, and any warm thermal, any thermals, area, any thermals in the area will, will draw into that tower and draw up the tower and release at the tower. So you sit over the top of the tower. Um, I've done that several times. Uh, Paris Williams and I did it for an hour or so. Uh, you, can, you can get some pretty neat soaring in there. And if anybody, any other pilots down a wall that you're flying by, they're looking at you wondering, what are you staying up on? You know, it's, it's cloudy. It's, you know, what's going on here? It's overcast, nobody's flying. And here you are sitting 100 feet over this tower. And you just stay over the tower. Uh, I mean, the tower comes up to a point, but you stay in the vicinity of it because the thermals are coming up the tower and they're releasing. And then when they release, uh, depending on what the wind direction is that, that day, you know, it's it's going off this way or going off that way or whatever. You can you can uh, you can work them for quite quite a while.
see that I went out of it there, so we go back over here, see if I can pick it back up. Seems it's small, it's right there though. Good enough. Not good enough to pick that one up. I talked to my glider. 